He keeps covering up his face. <laughs> Liam. Hi. It's starting to look a lot like Christmas. Are you ready, Liam? <laughs> look at your hair now. Let's go. I don't love driving in snow though, that's for sure. So we are going to Liam's sleep deprived EEG, which I will talk to you guys in a little bit about. He won't wear a mask, so we're gonna see if this, this will work, right? Keep you warm? Where are you taking me? A few moments later. So when I was told that I was gonna be in the Springs, they didn't tell me to go to the hospital. Liam's upset because I got him all together and now we have to drive across the street. He's not understanding it. Are we on our way again? Liam's getting his his PTN today. Huh, buddy? A snowy cold weekend, that's for sure. No. We got one summer, so let's make it count. You make me feel like everything's alright. Let's dance our problems away in the night. Love being right next to you. It is a little bit chilly today. We are done with the EEG, and I'm going to explain later why he had to have it more in more detail it's not going to be long it's a, it, it's a quick explanation but kind of not quick enough because i need to get home because i'm hungry i'm sharing this for any parents out there that have to get their toddler or young child an EEG, a sleep deprived EEG. So basically you're supposed to sleep deprive them as much as you can. Some kids you can keep them up all night and that works out. For Liam, I didn't give him melatonin last night so he woke up off and on all night long. So thankfully I didn't really need to like wake him up early just because he already had a restless sleep. And then his appointment was at 1230. So right before his appointment, I gave him his melatonin. So how they do it is they put little probes all over their head in specific spots. They actually measure it. Basically it just tells them the the electrical activity of the brain and can tell them if something else is going on usually if something shows up usually that's when they'll want to do an MRI I think I don't know I don't know a lot about Nero and they did that and then they got basically like resting stats of what I guess his brain is giving off before he's asleep and like with his eyes open and shut and all of that they had me get him asleep just for the first two phases of his sleep cycle so it was about 15 minutes he had to sleep completely and he did and that was a little bit hard to get him to bed but not super super hard like that was it and then they came in and did some flashing lights usually they'll do they'll do the flashing lights before if the child doesn't appear really really sleepy or relaxed Liam was just living his best life chill as ever so she said she didn't want to stimulate him with the little lights that like blink on and off and from start to finish it took a little over an hour and a half basically what the neurologist has said is that if this shows nothing, then she's gonna do a 24 hour EEG, which is basically where he wears it, I think. But today's Friday. Wani has the day off from work. Is that good? Hi, Nelly. He's just drinking his own drink. Her drink? Her drink. <laughs> All right, guys, my favorite part of snow is walking in it and the crunchy sound it makes. Let's see if over here makes a crunchy sound. Woo. I'm not gonna break my leg, gosh. No faith in me, no faith. What a long day it was. The babies are sleeping, it is late, so we are going to go paint the town. No, I'm kidding, we are just gonna go get us some trash bags. Christmas is in two weeks. Don't know how that snuck up on me, but it did. It hasn't snowed that often. It's actually been pretty warm here. And so it's nice to kind of have snow because it it looks like it's December. It's gonna be nice when we're decorating and there's snow outside. And then when we go to look at flights and there's snow, snow's just pretty. Tomorrow is Lonnie Jr.'s 15th birthday. So I wanted to document as much as he's comfortable with before we even go to tomorrow and that cute little SpongeBob says the next day. 
we are gonna talk about why Liam need an EEG because I posted a photo on Instagram and I did immediately say that Liam was fine, but like now lo looking back, I realized like one, people thought he was hurt initially. And even after they see the caption, Liam is okay, they're, they're thinking, did he have a seizure? Like what happened? So I'm gonna kind of explain what our plan is and what got us here and all of that. So if you don't know me, my name is Stephanie, hi. <laughs> um, we have six children, four are diagnosed with autism, four have been genetically tested um, and they all have either one or two of these chromosomal abnormalities, so genetic disorders. And I will link my latest genetics video where I talk about it because Lonnie, my husband and myself were genetically tested and things like that. So if you have any more questions about that or anything like that, I explain it much better in other videos. But um, Liam, my almost three year old, he has the chromosomal abnormality on 15. So what that means is on chromosome 15, he's missing like a microscopic part of his chromosome, which can sometimes make things happen. Developmental disability is really high on that list, but also epilepsy. So epilepsy and developmental disability are like the top two things. Before we get any comments, if you have questions about like why I had kids, all of that, I will link another video, which is our family FAQ to kind of answer questions. I didn't know that we had this chromosomal abnormality and I just kept having kids. So please hold those comments. Okay, thank you. All four younger kids have this abnormality that makes them higher risk for seizures. And it's like anything else with these genetic disorders, like just because you have it doesn't mean that you're going to have every disorder that is like high risk. We aren't having an EEG done on every single child because there's no reason to do a test like that just for the heck of it. So for Liam, he is my first kid that regresses them as much as he does. So he definitely has a language regression. That's probably his biggest regression, but sometimes like he'll show like signs that he's ready for potty training and then suddenly he starts regressing on that. So he regresses in regular skills, but language skills is probably the biggest one. He can repeat words we say, but it's really hard for him to tie meanings to it. But every now and then he'll tie a meaning to a word and then weeks later lose it. So for a while he would pick up a shoe and say shoe, but then he'll end up losing it. With that said, we went to the neurologist and the neurologist was like, hey, Let's do an EEG, see if anything is showing up. She actually treats a lot of patients with the same abnormality that Liam has. So that made me feel really, really confident. We have an amazing children's hospital here in Colorado, but sometimes he does stare off. Most kids that are on the spectrum do have an EEG done because a third of autistic individuals also have epilepsy. They're not exactly sure what the link is or why it happens, but it's very common. This is something that we can be like, okay, let's roll this out. So not only can an EEG show like seizure activity and things like that, but it can also show other factors to language regression. I'm not extremely worried about this. I'm not emotional. Like there, there's literally no feelings involved. I don't think anything is going to really come out of it. Probably I feel that way because Noah had the same issues, but if something does come out of it, I'll be very thankful I got this done. That is why the EEG is being done. It's nothing scary. It's not painful for them at all. If your child has to have this done, don't think it's gonna be painful. It's really sad to see them like, wrapped up in a head bandage because it, it makes them look like they've had an injury or something and it's just sad but it, it's it's not it's, it's not painful for them. Noah had a really hard time with the EEG and the sleep study because he is very 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 sensory defensive especially tactile so he doesn't like being touched so he screamed through the entire process but not because it hurt him really like physically hurt him but it still hurt him if that makes sense but Liam is a sensory seeker so for Liam it was really, really, really simple. I know this is probably going to be a question, but I'm not going to have an EEG done on every single child. I'm going to go to bed now, so I will see you guys tomorrow. We're about to do cake for Lonnie Jr. and 
I wanted to document at least a little bit of it. So usually for every birthday, we'll have the kids choose like where they wanna go for like a restaurant or something. Indoor eating right now with restaurants in Colorado shut down. So Lonnie Jr. <laughs> didn't have a lot of options, but he did choose Chinese, so that's what we had tonight. And we've just been kind of enjoying the night. He got a weight set for his birthday because that's what he wanted. He's trying to build those muscles. I cannot believe he's 15. It's literally mind blowing. Like you think it's mind blowing like with your first child, but then your next one, you're like, this is happening again. Like they get older every year. Look how pretty that tree looks. So pretty. So he wanted a chocolate cake. Because with so many birthdays, we have a lot of birthday cakes. So for the older ones, I always ask them if they just want like a special type of cake. Look at that. So nice. So Lonnie and I are going to run to the store, but then we're going to kind of... <laughs> clean this off for the therapist in the morning. It's supposed to snow again tomorrow night, so we've got to make sure that the porch and the sidewalk is cleared off so our therapist don't slip and fall. That that would be bad. And this is going to conclude the vlog with a few PSAs. If you could care less about the PSAs, you can click out now. On one of the videos, I think it was Penelope's eye appointment video, um, I had a few comments about her not wearing socks. I understand like why people are concerned about her little feetsies. But if you didn't know this in the video, in the shoulder, there were little pink socks. She likes taking them off. That day, it was literally in like the mid 60s, which is pretty warm here. <laughs> I know it's super confusing because a lot of people think of Colorado and mountains and snow. It's December. Of course, it's cold here, but our weather changes a lot. So like right now, it feels like we're kind of getting into winter now, but the week before it started snowing, like it was in the 60s and where we live is actually colder than the Denver area where we go up to. I am not calling any specific person out. We had a, quite a few comments about it, so I thought I would address that. None of these people were trying to say it in a rude, like malicious way at all. And our house stays on like 70, sometimes 68 if it's a little bit warmer outside. But we, we keep our house really, really, really warm. And if my feet are cold, I'm assuming the baby's feet are cold. If we go to pick up our kids and their feet or their hands are cold, we're gonna assume that they probably need socks. I'm home now. So that first PSA kind of brings us to the second and I haven't had to make this in a while but I do feel like we have new people and I don't mean this in a catty sarcastic funny way. Sometimes when you follow creators along with vlogs it feels like you have followed their entire day. Like they've missed nothing. You've went with them this entire way. And I understand there's sometimes I will watch vlogs and I feel the same way. I think that's kind of the appeal, right? Like you just feel like you're there with them and it's fun and all of that, but there's a lot left out. <laughs> we edit and we show it how we want it to be seen. So for example, a comment I've gotten before is that I'm never shown playing with my kids. Lonnie doesn't vlog. Usually when you see like both parents interacting with the kids is because the husband or wife, whichever it applies, also vlogs as well. So you'll very rarely see footage that Lonnie created. I film, I edit, I do the, I, I do everything. I'm a one man show. So in order for you guys to see me naturally playing with the kids will never happen, ever happen. Because it wouldn't be naturally. I'd have to set the camera up on a tripod and then show me playing with the kids. And at that point, it's, it's, it's not natural. I've never felt the need to do that to prove that I interact with my kids. I'm very confident in my mothering abilities. I don't think I'm a perfect mom, but I think overall I do a good job. And one of the things I love about being a mom is playing with my kids, is interacting with them, is talking to them, is spending time with them. That's what I love. I know because it seems like you guys follow us along the entire day. It seems like I'm filming the entire day. In reality, my vlogs are 30 to 40 minutes. I only post two to three times a week now. After January 1st, it'd be two times a week. It's like, 1% or less of my day that is filming. I'm sharing this because I want this to kind of go out to our viewers, but also for other people that watch other families. I think it's easy to watch like a little snippet of someone's life and think that they know X, Y, Z, or they know how things are behind the scenes. And it's not like that. I'm not going to stage clips. So you guys think a certain way about me. I'm not going to change how I do things 
or have Lonnie vlog more when he's not comfortable vlogging just to prove a point. Our channel is not entertainment. I am not going to start showing my kids more just to please other people. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, there might be one or two vlogs that are more censored around them if it's like a routine or if it's something specific or something like that, but overall, what you see is what you get. It's why I made a lifestyle channel. So if you guys just did not like the hauls, the shopping, all that, cleaning videos and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You can stay on this channel. If you liked both, then you can subscribe to both. If you only liked my lifestyle videos, then you can go only subscribe to the Landing Lifestyle. So if you guys have specific topics, I know potty training is a big one. I am gonna do that video, but I have to find a way to do it with still keeping my kids privacy and things like that. So I'm still kind of brainstorming how to do that. But if you guys have any like specific topics that you want me to touch on, even if it's something I did in the past, I know some of you guys have been asking when I'm getting my autism evaluation results back soon. I hope this, we're literally in the sixth week now. They said four to six weeks and we're in that last week. I hope this last part didn't come across snarky. Um, it's hard for me to address these type of things. I share some things that other creators don't and other people feel like it's none of other people's business and it, it is true. Um, there are some things if I don't feel comfortable sharing, I just say that, but I don't know. I feel like education is the cure to ignorance. So I am like rambling beyond belief. And if you've made it this far, I should send you a Starbucks card <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Where you move, make me blind You will always be there There's no doubt in my mind You will always be there Heading out to see ya And